This video is sponsored by OWC. You guys, the WWDC keynote was uh, jam-packed with tons of new features and improvements across all devices and platforms, and there were even some new hardware announcements too. Now, please check out the articles over at MacRumors.com for more details, because honestly, there was so much to unpack here that I got a little overwhelmed, and I just don't think I can fit every single thing that Apple announced at WWDC, but here's kind of everything that Apple announced at WWDC. So we'll start off with iOS 16. We have a pretty significant change coming to your lock screen with new customizable features and functionality. You can now customize the clock and change its color, the typeface, and so much more when it comes to all of the customization options with that department. You can also select widgets that you'd like to have displaying with pertinent information on your lock screen available at all times. There are tons of interactive wallpapers to choose from, photos from your own lock library, weather and astronomy interactive wallpapers, and so much more. Developers can utilize Widget Kit for their own apps so that widgets from their apps can be on the lock screen. And you can even save multiple lock screen formats or just multiple lock screens, I guess, so that you can easily change between them at any time. And we'll go over all of that in our hands-on video. So please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. iOS 16 brings a new revamped notification system that's been implemented with notifications rolling in from the bottom now, which I'm gonna see how quickly that is gonna be something that I get used to. Uh, but you can actually hide them at any time, which is kind of cool. And Apple has introduced live activities that offer a widget style info card at the bottom as well of your lock screen to give you live updates of things like NBA game scores, workouts, Uber rides, etc. This new lock screen can work in tandem with focus modes and focus filters so that you can have custom work lock screens and custom work focus modes, for example, entertainment focus mode and lock screens, and more. And apps will auto update according to your specific focus mode. Messages receive some incredibly useful features like being able to edit a message, being able to undo or delete a sent message, mark a message as unread, and you can use SharePlay via messages so that users can now chat and messages while watching content together as opposed to doing that while on a FaceTime call. Dictation got a huge and useful update that makes it far more useful and fluid when trying to switch between voice dictation and touch. Live text can now be used with videos, which is still blowing my mind right now because you can watch any video and if you pause the video and say you see text with another language on screen, you can actually highlight that text from a video that you were watching and you can translate it or copy and paste it into another app or whatever you wanna do with live text. You can do that, but now from a video. Wallet app got some useful updates as well, like in-app ID verification. You can now share keys in apps and the recipient that gets that key can now add that key to their own wallet. And Apple is also launching the tap to pay on iPhone feature later this month. And they also announced a new financing system with zero interest split up into four equal payments called Apple Pay Later. And this will work on any Apple Pay purchase. You can also track orders and shipping info from your Apple Pay payments via the wallet app. The Maps app received some updates like a multi-stop routing system where you can plan up to 15 different stops in advance, and Siri can add stops while driving via CarPlay. And Apple also added a My Sports section to the Apple News app for even better sports tracking with highlights available, scores, and news about your favorite sports teams. The Photos app now gets shared libraries where you can share any photo in a new library with other users. And actually you can even choose to toggle it on while taking pictures via the camera app in real time. The Home app has also been completely redesigned and it looks incredible. It actually looks useful to me in my opinion and I might finally make that full on switch to HomeKit because rooms and favorites, something that I just didn't really like the way it was implemented before, have now been organized in a single view with a much better UI. You have multi-camera views that you can see. So if you have four cameras, they're kind of in this tile look and you can see all of them at a quick glance. And you can also use the Home app via a widget on your lock screen for all of that information too. Speaking of looking incredible and being completely redesigned, holy CarPlay, uh, that looks absolutely amazing as it's been completely overhauled. You can now power CarPlay across your entire instrument cluster of select vehicles, of course, this will be taking advantage of future car models uh, that Apple has partnered up with, um, meaning the CarPlay UI that you have would actually work across the entire car. So if you're looking at your instrument cluster in front of you, you can now see custom gauges from CarPlay. You can see your fuel level, you can see directions there. 
uh, via the Maps app, everything that has to do with CarPlay, and it looks fantastic. And that, folks, was just iOS 16. Uh, now, Apple switched over to watchOS 9, and we're gonna kind of briefly go through that. They included some new watch faces, like a lunar watch face, something they call Playtime, and Metropolitan watch face. Uh, there's a refreshed Siri UI, a fantastic fix to notifications that they quickly glossed over, which makes them banners instead of full screen notifications. I can't tell you how many times I've been trying to do something on my watch, and I'm getting full screen messages notification every five seconds, which is annoying. Uh, finally, there are new running metrics, heart rate zones, and custom workouts that can be created via the Apple Watch. And you can also add the fitness app for everyone on iOS, regardless of whether you own an Apple Watch or not. So that's really nice. You can take advantage of some limited features there. And sleep stages has also been introduced for your watch, giving users more data like sleep cycles. There's also a new AFib history section for those with AFib that want better monitoring and history. And that can be shared with your doctors pretty quickly and easily. And finally, watchOS 9 adds medications so that you can track medications via your watch and health app. And you can do this with vitamins, supplements, and of course, prescriptions, as well as get notification and reminders on when to take your meds or if there are other drug to drug interactions that you need to be aware of with new medications that get logged. Okay, then Apple just quickly switched right over to the Mac. Not Mac OS, but the Mac, because that's right, the M2 chip has officially been announced and is available right now in two machines. Apple threw out a bunch of technical jargon at speeds that I was not capable of keeping up with, but all you need to know is that the M2 features up to 24 gigs of unified memory, eight core CPU with four performance and four high efficiency, and a 10 core GPU option. AKA the M2 chip is greater than the M1. The first two Macs to feature that M2, you ask? Why the new redesigned MacBook Air, of course. Oh, and a 13 inch MacBook Pro that still looks exactly the same as the M1 version, but now just has an M2 chip in it. But the new M2 MacBook Air is cool. We were mostly right about everything except for the colors. In true Apple fashion, Apple gave us the most boring colors on the planet, except for a new midnight MacBook, which looks like a matte black MacBook Air. And I'm kind of in love with it from what I'm seeing. There's no off-white keyboard or bezels, which I was kind of looking forward to seeing, but thankfully it looks much better with black, I think. But you do get MagSafe again on the left side, two Thunderbolt ports, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It's a 13.6 inch liquid retina display with a notch at the top and the same style keyboard as the latest 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it weighs only 2.7 pounds and is only 11.3 millimeters thick. It does offer a 1080p webcam and center stage and comes with a new dual USB-C 35 watt power adapter, or you can get the 67 watt adapter for fast charging of your MacBook Air. Apple says 30 minutes of charging with that adapter gets you 50%. There's no new Mac Pro, which is interesting. And if you still want the touch bar, you can get that previously mentioned MacBook Pro with the M2, which again is weird, but it's still available. The new machines will be available next month and the new MacBook Air starts at 1199. Next, we have macOS 13, which is now called macOS Ventura. This update features a new app management feature called Stage Manager. In Stage Manager, you can now arrange all open application and windows to the left side of your screen, and it kind of singles out one app so that you just don't feel overwhelmed with how many apps and windows you have open at one time. You can click an app off to the side to switch between which apps kind of take center stage there. And you can add multiple apps to the stage at any time. This makes it easier to work with different apps and windows at once. And it's much more organized in my opinion. You can click the desktop to reveal your cluttered desktop if you'd like. And stage manager can be activated via the control center, though I'd imagine there's gonna be a, maybe a gesture or a keyboard shortcut in the future as well. Apple also updated Spotlight to make it much more useful like adding Quick Look, uh, and you can also search live text from an image. Uh, you can start a timer from Spotlight or even run a shortcut. Spotlight on iOS has also been moved to the bottom of the home screen for easy access. The Mail app got some incredible new features that I'm excited about, which do work across iOS 16 and iPadOS 16, but Apple highlighted them with macOS 13, and so those features include Undo Send, 
schedule send, you can get follow-up suggestions or be reminded on when to take a look at that email that you just looked at. And search has been revamped and improved to make it easier to find what you're looking for. Finally, a mail update that makes it more in line with other third-party mail applications. Safari added shared tab groups so that you can collaborate with friends and family. Via Safari, maybe you're planning a trip uh, and you want users to be able to add tabs to that. You can do that at any time. And pass keys was also introduced as a way to authenticate passwords via touch or face ID. There's a digital key created for websites rather than a password, and it can't be stolen or fished, and it works in apps and across the web and syncs across all of your devices too. And there's also continuity, which finally gives users the ability to hand off FaceTime calls from one device to another, as well as letting users use their iPhone as a webcam with your Mac. This feature comes with another feature called Desk View, which basically gives you a multi-camera view of you and your desk at the same time, in case maybe you wanted to draw and show somebody your drawings or do a magic trick. I don't know. There's got to be something useful for you there, but it's available if you want it. Lastly, we have iPadOS. Yes, that's right. Apple completely neglected tvOS, so don't even ask about it. iPadOS gets pretty much all of the iOS 16 features that we just talked about, and even some of the macOS features too. For starters, you do get a full-blown weather app, which is great, um, but there's still no mention of a calculator. You can now collaborate easily with users across a variety of different applications, all from the share sheet and in new ways, like you can quickly access messages, a phone call, or a FaceTime call. And we get customizable toolbars for the first time in applications on iPadOS. There's a new color reference mode for photo and video editing, display scaling, and also you do get stage manager, which is probably the highlight feature here because this gives you basically the ability to now freely resize your app windows for a true multitasking experience. It kind of behaves the exact same way as what you got on macOS Ventura, but also now you get the ability to, you know, extend applications and resize them and put them on an external display, which takes advantage of the full screen and it no longer mirrors everything that your iPad is doing. It's basically a true dual monitor setup with your M1 iPad. And it's something that everyone has been clamoring for and Apple has finally given it to us. And really, that's just about it. I mean, I know there's a bunch of other little things that they didn't even mention or I didn't even get a chance to mention what they mentioned. So please be sure to check out MacRumors.com for all of the updates. And of course, we'll be going hands-on with all of the latest OSs that were just released. And we'll be going over the new MacBook Air shortly in a video, as well as going hands-on with that MacBook Air when it arrives next month. Now, before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. The OWC Mini Stack STX is a stackable storage solution and Thunderbolt Hub expansion for your Mac Mini, or really any Mac. With a universal SATA hard drive SSD bay and an NVMe SSD slot, you can actually expand your mini storage capacity to gigantic proportions. Three Thunderbolt ports are enabled for you to connect millions of Thunderbolt USB and future USB 4 drives, displays, AV mixers, cameras and tablets, as well as desktop accessories like a keyboard, card reader, or mouse. The Mini Stack STX is whisper quiet due to its internal heatsink and cooling fan. You can add over 200 times more storage to your Mac Mini and add RAID protection via soft RAID software. And of course, you're adding a mix of up to five Thunderbolt devices, three USB, and two displays. Even though this size perfectly for a Mac Mini, as I said before, you can use it with any Mac, even a PC or your iPad and Chromebooks. And so for more information about OWC in the Mini Stack STX, visit the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with MacDreamers. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.